I actually wanted to do this review last year. However, I got caught up with all the Star Wars stuff, so, you know, I'm not going to do it in January. So, I had to wait until Christmas 2016. So, here we are. And actually, I think it's quite fitting. Because 2016 has been an interesting year. Okay, well, then it's not fitting because this movie is anything but interesting. However, something interesting did happen to me when I was writing this review. I found that every single time I used the word movie to describe this thing, I died a little inside. Because this really doesn't feel like a movie. I have a hard time calling this a movie. It's basically just an hour-long video sermon by Kirk Cameron. Seriously, I will break down the storyline once I've gone through everything, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. But first, let's take a look at the poster, and take a good look at it, because there's more going on in this poster than in the actual movie. The funny thing is, when I first saw the trailer for this movie a few years ago, I knew it was going to be about nothing, because the trailer was basically about nothing. This Christmas, dive headfirst into all of the joy the dancing, the celebration, the feasting. Wow, sounds like a must-see instant holiday classic. And what does that mean, the feasting? Like, are we gonna have to, are we, are we gonna have to watch you eat? Well, I guess we're gonna find out, won't we? Yep, you're in for a surprise. Actually, no, you're not in for a surprise. In fact, lower your expectations. Lower than they were probably already going into this and then lower them some more. The movie starts with Kirk talking about all the things he loves about Christmas and kind of rambling on about shit. And you better get used to hearing him talk because this is gonna be pretty much the entire movie. So there's this Christmas party going on with Kirk and his whole family, except for his brother-in-law who apparently just isn't into Christmas this year. Kirk's brother-in-law is actually named Christian because let's just throw all subtlety out the window, why not? Anyways, Christian is sitting in the back room when DeAndre comes over to him and just starts talking about r random garbage. Something about not being able to wear crazy shirts on Friday at work anymore. I don't want floor two. You know what happens down to floor two? I don't, don't want to find out because I'm on floor four. And then they start taking over, telling us we can't have Fridays. Then you can't have Thursdays. Then you can't have Tuesdays. And what's left? Wednesday, hump day. That's already a day. That's not our day. We need a day for us. Crazy shirt Fridays. This scene is incredibly pointless. It adds nothing. In fact, all of the dialogue here, like most of the dialogue in the whole movie, actually, makes me wonder if there actually was a script written aside from Kirk's narration. Because so much of this sounds redundant and improvised. Funny thing about the movie is that Christian is kind of made out to be this Grinch yet I totally understand where he's coming from. In fact, I think he makes the most sense when he's the Grinch. After a while, Christian just kind of starts to tune out DeAndre's rant, and which it's totally understandable, actually. I would have a hard time paying attention to that shit, too. If someone used to come up to me at a, like a party and start talking about how they can't wear crazy shirts on Friday, what does that even mean? Who does that? I, I honestly, I don't even think I'd even, I don't think I could pay attention either. When I get, the funny thing is when I drink, I have, I think I have less patience with people's, like, just drunken ramblings. I just don't f***ing care. We can't wear crazy shirts on Friday. Then we're gonna lose Wednesdays, we're gonna lose Thursdays, we're gonna lose Tuesdays. Like, holy f blow my brains out. Christian escapes to the car in his driveway, and this is where Kirk finds him. And here we go. This is where we're gonna spend the majority of this movie. So Christian starts talking about how he looks around and sees all this greed and materialism and how we should be more giving and pretty much everything he says here at this point. It makes sense. Even if you're not a religious person, you could listen to this and be like, yeah, I could see where he's coming from. And Kirk actually says that as well, but then he follows it up with this. You're all wrong. About what? About everything you just said. I said a lot. Yeah, and it's all wrong. Yes, he's all wrong. Even the thinking about the less fortunate part. Because, I mean, f empathy. It's Christmas! And then we have this scene between DeAndre and this other character. I I'm not even going to look it up. But it's basically him talking about how there's this war on Christmas and all of these conspiracy theories that make no sense at all. 
I don't know why this is in the movie. It makes no sense. What, what is the point of this? Is it, is it supposed to be funny? Are you making fun of people that think this way? What is this? They put their cups over their mouths so that no one would be able to, I guess, read their lips. But honestly, I think it was because he wasn't going to be able to memorize all of his lines. So it's a good excuse for them to just dub it over later. Delicious and exotic. Come on, you got the cantrails and harp trying to control the weather with the womp, womp, womp sounds and GMOs and pesticides. Just watching it, none of it matches. And it's obvious that at some points here, he wasn't even saying anything. So you know what we gotta do, right? What? The only thing we can do. And then we never find out what that is. The, the movie never goes back to these two characters again. It shows them at some points, but they don't do anything. The only thing I found is at the very end of the credits, after all of the outtakes and bloopers, they say they gotta start a movement with Kirk Cameron, and then he starts freestyling. I'll leave it to you to imagine how that sounded. So was that just for fun, or was that actually the thing they were talking about? Starting a movement with Kirk Cameron making this movie. As minimal as the story, and trust me, I'm hesitant to use the word story, but as minimal as the story is, this adds nothing to it. This is basically a runtime extender. That's what this is. Anyways, the next 20 minutes is just a back and forth in the car between Kirk and Christian about how everything is actually about Jesus and it, ju it just gets crazy. Okay, so are you ready for this? <laughs> let, let me get this straight here. Christmas trees, are actually about Jesus because when God made the world, he had a house and he filled his house with trees and then put lights and nuts and fruits on the trees. And then uh, when Adam ate fruit from God's tree in the Garden of Eden, uh, he couldn't put the, tr the fruit back onto the tree because it was inside him. So in order to do that, he would have to put himself back on the tree and since Jesus was the last Adam, he put himself on the cross as to put the fruit back on the tree? I think this is... What? He starts sounding like that one friend who's you know, pulled one too many cones and just starts trying to connect everything. What if we decorate Christmas trees because God made trees? and we put decorations on the trees, just like God put fruit on the trees. What? Yes. All right. At one point, Kirk starts talking about how the presents look like a city skyline, the skyline of New Jerusalem, and how the tree at the center is the tree of life, and so on and so on. Now, you can believe whatever you want. I really don't care. But I find it amazing that when you think hard enough, you can pretty much connect anything to anything else, really. It's, it's not that hard. Just pick random things and you can connect them to God or Jesus or whatever you want. Just here, I'm gonna do this. I, I'm actually gonna make it, I'm gonna try and sound like Kirk does in the movie. Hot dogs, believe it or not, but hot dogs are actually representative of the great flood. Hot dogs are made from meat trimmings of different animals, pork, chicken, and beef. Hot dogs combine those animals. And who else do we know of that combined the animals, gathered them together? Noah. Noah combined all the animals in the ark. Now, look at the hot dog bun. Do you notice something? Picture the bun like an ark, and the animals go into the ark. And the only reason we're allowed to eat hot dogs today is because Noah and the animals survived the great flood on the ark. The part about Santa Claus is just hilarious. Christian starts comparing Santa Claus to Satan because their names have the same letters and how Satan gets rid of Jesus much like Santa gets rid of Jesus on Christmas and it just goes on and on forever. The dialogue in the car, again, a lot of it is obviously improvised, but it just keeps going on. Like, it's to the point where it's just annoying and repetitive. This is, this is a complete hijacking. This is a hijacking high-handed, hijacking, handedness, jacking. It's like a carjacking, but like of our religion. So Kirk tells the story of St. Nicholas who went to this bishop who was spreading heresy around. 
talking about how Jesus was less than God, I guess. And St. Nick came and paid him a visit. The official record says that at a critical moment during the council, Nicholas put the heretic Arius to shame, not only by word, but also by deed, smiting him on the cheek. You'd think that smiting him on the cheek would mean, like what, slap to the face, punch to the face maybe? But instead, they just show him beating this guy up, dragging him outside, and just going ape shit on this guy. Yes, I'm sure this is the story we should be teaching our kids. If someone disagrees with your beliefs, just take him outside and beat the shit out of him. I'm sure all those mall visits to see Santa are just gonna be so much more intimidating now. You know, if you're not good this year, not only will Santa put a lump of coal in your stocking, but I mean, he just might drag you out into the parking lot and break your legs right now. So after the beatdown, he comes home and some of the acting here, I gotta say, it's, it's like Silent Night, Deadly Night part two caliber. Oh, look who it is. Better? You get that out of your system? Come on, we got work to do. Come on, let's go bless some kids tonight. We've got gifts to give. <laughs> yes, that's such a lovely story. Go out, break a few bones, come home, hop in the sleigh. Merry Christmas to all. Here you go, little, little Jebediah. I brought you this wooden horse. It's got some blood on it, but that should wash right off. So after all of this, for whatever reason, Christian is just like, I've been wrong the whole time. And then after some more dialogue that just repeats over and over again, he rushes into the house and has some sort of awakening. Either that or he had a stash of MD in the car and that's really why he went out there in the first place. Now the rest of the movie is just all slow motion shots that will bore you to tears as if the movie hasn't already done that. So then Christian goes up to his wife and apologizes for being a jerk and says, I went ahead and just organized a hip hop dance crew that encompasses all the joy and gospel burst and excitement that I alone as one man just cannot express. No, really, I did. When? When did you do this? When did you organize an entire hip hop dance routine? You just got back into the house. You didn't do it before when you were in a piss poor mood the whole time. You weren't sitting in the back room going, I just hate this holiday now. But damn it, people, we gotta get this choreography right. Come on, five, six, seven, eight. And then there's a four minute long dance scene because that's what we all needed to see. And of course, the feasting, the part we've all been waiting for. Everybody goes crazy and you know what? I gotta give this guy some credit because he's just so into it. His reaction is pretty much the same as mine when I finished writing this review and I realized I'd never have to watch this thing ever again. So during the feasting, Kirk tells us, hey, the materialism is actually a really good thing because the eternal God took on a material body. So break out your finest silver, the biggest ham, the richest butter. I'm serious, that's actually a line in the movie. Unless, of course, you're not that wealthy, then I don't know what to tell you. Go make more money? Because that's what God would want, I guess? Wait a minute. Honey, is this our richest butter? I don't think it is. It doesn't taste like the richest butter we have. Where did you get it? Giant fridge number one or giant fridge number two? Because we all know giant fridge number one is all peasant food. So as I mentioned before, let's look at the storyline for this thing. Christian leaves the party. Kirk tells him, hey, just look at everything my way. And Christian just basically says, yeah, this is much better. I mean, forget everything I said about being critical of the materialism and thinking about the less fortunate. This is much more convenient. I mean, we're rich. That's the whole movie, basically. Now, this wasn't written or directed by Kirk Cameron. It was actually directed and co-written by Darren Doan, who plays Christian. And he's actually a music video director. He's done quite a bit of music videos, but it also makes sense that most of this movie kind of looks like a music video in some parts because of all the slow motion that's used. The runtime is listed at 79 minutes, and that's a generous 79 minutes. It's, the, the, the ending credit sequence is 10 minutes long. 10 minutes long. And then you throw in the bloopers in there and stuff that just, you know, aren't that interesting at all. So in the end, really, it's about, it's about an hour of Kirk Cameron talking. And the other stuff is just, what? Probably a, you know, a dozen setups, give or take, that honestly, you could probably shoot this whole thing in a week or two. 
a weekend or two. Now, when the movie came out, it was met with some controversy because the critics didn't like it. Surprise, surprise. So Kirk took to his Facebook page and said, Help me storm the gates of Rotten Tomatoes. All of you who love saving Christmas, go rate it at Rotten Tomatoes right now and send the message to all the critics that we decide what movies we want our families to see. Okay, so no one's debating that in the first place. No one's deciding anything for you. Critics just give their critical opinion. It's up to you to decide what actual movies that you see. This isn't Stalin's Russia, dude. You can go see whatever movie you want. I love how it's basically just go out there and give the movie a good rating to send a message to all those critics that we don't care about ratings. And of course, you can just imagine what happened. The internet, you know, caught wind of this and just bombed this thing into the IMDb bottom 100 list of movies. Right now, it sits at number two. It's supposed to be, I've seen it listed somewhere as a religious comedy. There's no... Well, there's no intentionally funny parts at all throughout the whole thing. All I want to say is that for you guys, no matter what you celebrate, I hope you have a great time this holiday season. For me, Christmas has always been getting together with my family and friends and spending time together. I love giving gifts to everyone. I really couldn't give a shit less, you know, how shiny the forks are or how rich the butter is. So if you celebrate Christmas, no matter how you celebrate it, Merry Christmas. And to everyone else, I wish you a safe and happy holiday season. I'll see you guys in 2017 with more bad movies. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a Festivus party to go to because I've had a lot of problems with a lot of people this year, and tonight, they're going to hear about it. I should call this Mark's saving time, saving people's time. Once he has his f***ing revelation or whatever, then the character just takes a turn into... Like, full-scale lobotomy, I don't know.